Before we get to the content, I just want to remind you guys, we're giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel, and we're going to announce the giveaway winner in the middle of September. In addition to that, we're giving away multiple copies of Madden 2022. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Now that we got all that out of the way, Burk! Personally, I love fantasy football, but unfortunately, when you make like five videos a day the way I do, you don't really have time to be a part of as many fantasy football leagues as I would like to be a part of. And I don't have enough time to set up lineups and focus on the waiver wire and just stress myself out each and every week with all the details. Thankfully, there is a fantasy football league that allows me to just go based off of my fantasy football brilliance and not so so much on my ability to stay up till three in the morning placing waiver wire claims and it's called underdog fantasy underdog fantasy also has this great one million dollar tournament that you get a free entry to so you could try it out the way it works is you go ahead and you draft your team in the very beginning and underdog fantasy calculates your score based off of the best players that scored for you that week which means there's no players that are going to be left on your bench which means if odell beckham jr goes off for 40 points one week you're not going to accidentally leave him on your bench because he'll automatically be part of your starting lineup. Your best players are automatically in, the players that stink stay on the bench, and honestly I think it's a way better way of playing fantasy football. So you can check it out by using my link in the description down below, and if you use my promo code you get a free $25 to try it out. And thank you Underdog Fantasy for the sponsor. Mike check 1212 what's going on everybody? So a few days ago, Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars made their official debut for this up coming NFL preseason and this was seen as a very big deal because Jacksonville is literally undergoing a brand new era they've done a bunch of crazy stuff this past offseason to really turn the team around whether it was hiring Urban Meyer one of the most successful yet controversial collegiate head coaches of our generation all the way to having the ability to select one of the most transcendent talents with the number one overall pick and honestly despite having all the tools there Trevor Lawrence seemed to have struggled a little bit bit in his debut. And a large part of that isn't necessarily his fault. A lot of his issues from Clemson did happen to transfer over to the NFL. Things like overthrows and being able to process what NFL defenses throw at him. But again, this is Trevor Lawrence's first bit of preseason action. And this was to be expected. Honestly, I wasn't really expecting Trevor Lawrence to come here and look like the next coming of Tom Brady practically immediately. And some of the issues that at least I perceived from the Jacksonville Jaguars Jaguars offense did happen to fester and did affect Trevor. There were multiple plays in particular where Trevor was being pressured as a result of a offensive line that in my opinion isn't necessarily the strongest and this is something that I actually got on the Jacksonville Jaguars for. I felt like the Travis Etienne selection was a little unnecessary. I felt like there were multiple offensive linemen available that should have been a little bit higher priority than spending a first round pick on a halfback despite already having a full fully proven halfback in James Robinson, but I digress. I'm sure as time goes on, Trevor Lawrence will improve, and I'm not necessarily going to judge the man based off of this first bit of preseason action. However, I will tell you what I will judge, and that is the fact that the Jacksonville Jaguars did decide to sign Tim Tebow. Now, I really want to preface this by saying I don't want the man to fail, but whenever I see a media circus frenzy around a player that gets to a point that it's just border line ridiculous. I have to say something and I'm even willing to provide some sort of alternative. So don't call me a Tim Tebow hater because I really want him to succeed. And uh, if you're a supporter of mine, please like this video because I'm probably going to get a decent amount of dislikes on it. When I first saw Tim Tebow get signed to the Jacksonville Jaguars, a part of me just did a double take. I literally said to myself, wait, what? A 33 year 
rule that played quarterback throughout his entire collegiate career, then decided to go and play baseball, then decided to be an ESPN analyst, and now is deciding to sign with the Jacksonville Jaguars and convert to a tight end while he's in his mid-30s. It just doesn't sound like a good idea. A lot of tight ends retire at that age, so hearing Tim Tebow signing with the Jacksonville Jaguars just so he could be their tight end initially just was very odd to me. But as time progressed forward and I saw the training camp footage of the man, the guy looked like he was in absolutely remarkable shape. So I thought to myself, okay, there might be something here. But being a tight end in the NFL, it requires a very versatile skill set. I mean, you not only have to be able to have a decently developed route tree, but in addition to this, you need to be a really good pass blocker and a very phenomenal run blocker if you want to be a difference maker in the NFL. And I believe that's the issues that we saw in Tim Tebow's debut. So as the debut was going on, Tim Tebow needed to make a run block on Curtis Weaver. So for those of you guys that don't know who Curtis Weaver is, this is a player that has been in the NFL for one year. For the most part, he has been on the Miami Dolphins practice squad. He was cut after being drafted in the fifth round of the 2020 NFL draft by the Dolphins. And then he got claimed off of waivers by the Cleveland Browns. Not to be rude, not to be offensive or anything Tell like that, because for all you know, Curtis Weaver could go on and have a very successful career in the NFL. But for the most part, this is your typical preseason player. You know, someone that might not even make the team and there's a pretty decent chance that he doesn't make the team. Someone that could get cut after this game. So what I'm trying to say is this is as easy competition as you can possibly get if you're Tim Tebow. So Tim Tebow goes up against him to try to make a block, a very simple block. And his attempt to make this cut block is by far one of the most pitiful attempts that we have ever seen. And if that couldn't get even worse, the very next play, Curtis Weaver doesn't even need to really do anything complicated to get past Tim Tebow. He just kind of shoved him to the side and was able to make a tackle on Dare Agunbowale. I really hope I didn't butcher that. Which brings me to my next point here. And again, this is nothing against Tim Tebow, but I heard Skip Bayless come out and say that, hey, maybe Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer are trying to do this on purpose to at least have everyone lower their expectations for Tim Tebow. But I don't think anyone's game planning around Tim Tebow, especially if his ceiling here would probably be being the tight end number three or the tight end number four on your roster. Now, AJ Hawk went on the McAfee show and said that typically your third or fourth tight end is going to be responsible for a lot of run blocking and at least blocking on special teams. And if Tim Tebow can't do that, well, what is his purpose going to be on the Jacksonville Jaguars? Sure, Tim Tebow almost came down with a reception as well, but Tavon Austin hopped in front of him and hey, maybe Tavon Austin saved him. Maybe for all you know, Tim Tebow would have dropped that pass. But I'll tell you what, I do gather from this. If Tim Tebow struggles on multiple plays to make a simple run block on a player that might not even make it into the NFL, and I'm sorry if I sound overly negative on Curtis Weaver, for all you know, he could be a beast in the NFL, then what makes you think that Tim Tebow will be able to make the same exact block on some of the greatest ends in the NFL? I mean, you're not going to be going up against Curtis Weaver if you're playing first team reps for the Jaguars. So you're Here's my proposition, and it's going to sound very negative. I do think Tim Tebow is a phenomenal presence to have in the locker room. I feel like he's just the type of guy you need to instill positivity in any culture, whether it's extremely toxic or very positive. I feel like just him being in that locker room is a general morale boost to all of his teammates. And as a result, I do see the value of him in the locker room. But I don't necessarily think he needs to be a player in that locker room. You know, I think it's very random to try to teach him how to play tight end at the age of 33. And I feel like he'd be better suited at least in a coaching-like role, maybe as an assistant or a film coordinator, slowly climb his ranks into becoming an offensive coordinator one day down the line, maybe even one day becoming a head coach. But at this stage of his career, I think it's very silly for him to continue to chase being a football player, especially if he clearly doesn't have the skills to do so. Now, I'm a huge Tebow fan and I hope he proves me wrong. And I hate making negative videos like this, but it doesn't look like he could even perform his job at the most basic level as a tight end. Now, I hope I'm wrong once again, because I love Tim Tebow, but after his first preseason game, this is my perception of him, and unless if I see a huge jump from preseason game one to preseason game two, I'm going to stand by what I'm saying here. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about Tim Tebow. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, 
and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload. <laughs>